1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1 to the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder a witness of witness of Christ's sufferings and one who will also share in the glory to be revealed um, can uh, Pradeep uh, can you help her can you see if the if he wants to go to uh, Sunday school if, if that's okay uh, yeah Bindu just First Peter chapter 5 and verse 1 to the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder a witness of Christ's sufferings and one who will also share in the glory to be revealed Peter in John chapter 21 made a mistake of leading the people in a wrong way but as the time passed after the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus said to them you wait and you will receive the Holy Spirit and power Acts chapter 2 the on the day of Pentecost the Holy Spirit God came from that day on this Peter was a changed man I tell you how much ever we try to do things on our own we cannot change ourselves when the Holy Spirit God came he changed Peter totally he changed all the people that, that day you know Peter before the day of Pentecost was a different man he was a timid man even in front of a, in front of a young a child maybe younger than even Alina you know uh, when she said you are with Jesus she said no 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 I don't even know who is Jesus Christ he denied Jesus Christ three times and then he drowned in the water once he took his eyes off Jesus and then you see there are lot, ne lot of negative things that you can talk about Peter he is a hasty man he took the sword and was about to kill Malchus and Malchus uh, ducked and his ear was cut off. Nobody wants to cut off a ear. I've never seen anybody cutting an ear with a uh, sword. He probably wanted to chop his head off, but the ear was cut off. Jesus picked it up and then healed this man. What? I mean, if you see the, uh, uh, you, you can say, uh, if you see the resume of, of uh, Peter, it's all negative. He's not the right person for this. But on the day of Pentecost, God changed this man. And after the day of Pentecost, he became very bold. Remember, he was uh, uh, he denied Jesus Christ in front of a young girl. But in Acts chapter 4, he was vehemently proclaiming about Jesus Christ to the government. He said, should, I, uh, should we obey you rather than God? He said, we, see, look at Acts chapter 4. See, this, the change in this man, what happened in his life. Acts chapter 4 and verse 19. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. He said, I cannot keep quiet. You know, prior to this they were given a caution, don't talk about Jesus anywhere. Peter and John had a jealousy problem before uh, the resurrection, you know. Peter and John had a jealousy problem. Same John, same John chapter 21. Look at this. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Jesus talks to Peter and said, uh, uh, Do you love me? Three times, right? Three times. You know, God has a great sense of humor. You know, God has a great sense of humor. You know why? Peter denied Jesus Christ how many times? Three times. How many times Jesus asked Peter, uh, Do you love me? Three times. Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to Cornelius' house, he got a vision that the uh, carpet with all the creatures, it came down. Right? You know how many times it came down in the vision? Three times. So, he was always trying to remind, say, mm, three times, you know, you denied me, you denied me three times. So, God has a great sense of humor. When Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? And this man said, Peter said, third time, yes, Lord, you know, you know I love you. And that's when Jesus said, you know what Peter, there will come a day, you don't want to go to a certain place, but you will, they will, you'll be taken. John chapter 12, 21 and verse 18, I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted, but now you're old, when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. 
the Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God then he said to him follow me so Jesus said to Peter in Luke chapter 5 follow me for I will make you fishers of men but after Peter messed up his life after he made so many mistakes he got a second call can you hear me he got a second invitation which was a similar to the first invitation you know the call of God is always the same there's a beautiful song in Telugu which says if, see this, is, this call this appeal is for you even if you don't listen to this it is for you let me tell you this in Telugu and also you will understand what this is this call this appeal is for you even if you don't listen this is for you that's the persistence of Jesus Christ he says you know what I love you so much I don't care you say I love you so much you say I don't care I don't want to listen God says I still love you that's the persistence when Peter got a call and he said I will make you fishers of men he made so many mistakes you know when we get in close to people st slowly you know we start looking at the negatives of people am I right initially the first introduction is all very formal very nice and slowly you start looking at the negatives of people and then what do you say uh, I thought he was like this but uh, I thought she was so good but you know what she's like this so we start looking at the negatives that is what is happening before the Pentecost when Jesus said to Peter second time he gave a call and said Peter follow me look at John chapter 21 and verse 20 Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said Lord who is going to betray you you know John never says it is me it always describes himself he doesn't tell his name this 21 is John and look at verse 21 John 21 21 when Peter saw him he asked Lord what about him yeah when Peter saw him he asked Lord what about him you know why Peter got jealous here you know when Peter said when Peter saw him he asked why because look at verse 20 Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them see Jesus gave a call to who Peter to follow but he suddenly saw who is following John is following you get it God Jesus gave a call to Peter and said Peter follow me and Jesus is walking and who is behind him John is behind him this fellow he, he called me to follow him this fellow is already following him so that's where the jealousy came and that's when Peter said oh, you told that I will die like this then this, this is a way he will die you know that was the indication Jesus said so Peter said okay you told about how I'm going to die what about your favorite fellow this is your favorite fellow you always keep him next, next to you right how is he going to die and Jesus said what's your problem man what's your problem turn to Acts chapter 3 Acts chapter 3 and verse 1 this you know what is the first miracle in the Bible uh, after the day of Pentecost after the day of Pentecost I believe it is Acts chapter 3 verse 1 you know what is that one day Peter and John these fellows never got together any time Peter and John never were together they were there see the interesting thing is Peter and John is, see Jesus had 12 disciples one was Judas Iscariot the next is 8 you know then 3 3 8 1 this is how they were in the gradation Judas Iscariot the negative guy 8 guys and then 3 Peter John and James in this Peter John and James again John is the closest right so these three are the same group think about this these three are in the same group but they are not getting along they have a jealousy problem sometimes you know we come to the same church we say praise the Lord we are so nice to one another still we have a jealousy problem our wishing our, our loving one another becomes very superficial as soon as you know I used to tell this example when I used to work in the back home in uh, no in the teaching industry I used to always say this you know suppose you're going in a car there are five people traveling in a car so you drop off one guy at his house 
next four people are uh, uh, traveling further what is the topic in that car what is the topic in that car the fellow who you dropped <laughs> the fellow who you dropped yeah that fellow was shouting and jumble like anything you know that fellow was coughing like anything why didn't he stay back home that idiot you know so why while he was there why didn't you tell him why didn't you open the window for him why didn't you go and buy halls for him instead of that after he goes then you have the discussion about him see and the four fellows even don't realize that whoever gets off he will become the topic the next for the next three see we we have a superficial love that doesn't matter one day peter and john the greatest miracle after the day of pentecost as the time passes by in our spiritual life what do you think we we need to have in our life maturity see today if you look at your own life's incidents and uh, you had to handle them the same instances today say 20 years ago something happened in your life 15 years ago something happened 10 years ago something happened and same incident happens now i'm sure you will handle it differently am i right because you are now more mature in spiritual life also we need to be growing and maturing peter writing this uh, letter as a mature man of god even john you know what kind of man john was john and james one day said jesus do you want us to call fire from heaven and burn these fellows I said hey oh, hold on man hold on man you know they're called the sons of thunder you know john is called the his brother and he both are called the sons of thunder what does it mean some people in the preach it's all fire and brimstone god calls them for that some people are very soft very nice you know god calls certain people to tell like nathan you are the man i don't care who you are john was like that he used to be very upfront with people he would be cutthroat he would say he was very jealous for god and said jesus these people don't believe in you shall i call fire from heaven jesus said excuse me man hold on hold on hold on the same person as he grows to become a 90 year old man as a mature person he is called the apostle of love you read john gospel of john first john second john third john you will find three two topics in the gospels and whatever uh, and letters of john light and love these are the two themes john always says love love and i'm like a dear father he says i'm like see read first john and see how he addresses people he says my dear children oh hold on hold on hold on, hold on. see few years ago what were you fire and brimstone the same man as he grows up he says my dear children why do you want to go with the world see that maturity peter also matured when peter matured in first peter chapter 5 verse 1 he says this to the elders among you i appeal as a fellow elder a witness of christ's sufferings and one who will also share in the glory to be revealed to the elders among you i appeal as a fellow elder peter is saying i appeal to you as a fellow elder see we see god's ways are different i never had the thought of talking about john 21 but god brought that that's beautiful because that falls in context now in john 21 you see in the gradation that we give to people in the ministry in the christendom there are people who are kind of more known more popular maybe bigger some people who are not very well known so what you do is in the church you start looking at when when you have an issue when you have certain things you know you go to certain people so therefore now who is the top guy here in john chapter 21 in the group of people peter now peter when he is writing to the elders he could have said hey you fellows you juniors you get it he could have said you juniors i'm the senior guy you know how many churches have a senior junior problem oh somebody comes new to the church and then there is something say this uh, come up with an idea and immediately somebody who's been there for from the beginning is excuse me 
you just came yesterday so keep calm okay yeah we know the history here church i don't want this to happen in transformation we are a young church only a 3 year old church but i'm talking about churches which have i've been in a church which was established in 1889 before i came here i was in a church established in 1889 you want to make any change you change the color of the carpet there's a big discussion just to change the chairs change the chairs there was a 45 minute discussion on changing the chairs what kind of chair you need to change 45 minutes and nobody has the guts to tell that woman excuse me sister you are going beyond control please stop that we'll get the chairs whatever you want 45 minutes she described the chair the screw will be here the cushion will be here this will be red color here green excuse me we try to go back into the history and say you know i'm a senior i've been here for low so long what do you know peter could have said this i'm a senior man do you know my resume hey do you know my resume I was with Jesus on the mountain. I walked with Peter. Hey, did you did you walk on water? John, did you walk on water? James, did you walk? Bartholomew, uh, did you walk on water? I walked on water. Stop your nonsense. Listen to me. All right. This is what we would do, right? <laughs> we just pick up our credibility and say, isn't it, isn't it true? Apart from Jesus Christ, after Jesus left, you know, you want to find the Guinness Book of World Records for a man walking on water. Of course, he doesn't tell about it. he sank. right but at least a few steps he took the credibility goes to peter and says wow what a great man he is so with that kind of a life he would he should be dominant and domineering with the other people and say you know i'm a big guy i tell you one thing as you grow more in christian life that's not where you become that's actually maybe you're aging in uh, maturing in age but not in spirituality i tell you one thing Every old man is not a wise man please think about that See wisdom comes with age people say right but not every old old man is a wise man Solomon was not even a old man but he was a wise man But there are some people who are young but very wise Some people are old and when severely stupid need not they need not be wise But in spiritual life as you keep growing you know what happens as you keep growing in spiritual life you become like peter you know what he says to the elders among you i appeal as a fellow elder what does it mean what does it mean i appeal as a fellow elder i am also one with you i am not here superior i am writing to you i am appealing to you not as a big boss not as a big guy I'm appealing to you as one among you. This is not how Peter was. When on the day of uh, 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 you know the Lord's supper they asked no some one of you is going to betray me what is all these disciples say? What did they all say? Not I, not I, not I. And Peter said to Jesus, I no you cannot go to the cross. You cannot go to the cross. and that's when jesus said satan get behind me you know this man was kind of elevated but as he as he as he was saved as he received the holy spirit and in the days to come he humbles himself you know what is a sign of maturity in spiritual life we become more humble if you want to really know whether a person is more spiritual or not you have a litmus test and that litmus test is our humility a person who is more closer to god will become more and more humble a person see god resists the proud you know it's so interesting peter and james both tell the same story look at first peter chapter 5 and verse 6 First Peter chapter five and verse six: Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Humble yourselves, so that you may be lifted in what? In due time. Look at James chapter four and verse ten. James chapter four verse ten. He tells you exactly the same thing. 
humble yourselves and before the Lord and he will lift you up he will lift you up God must exalt you God must give you that growth he will exalt you when when does it happen when does it happen you know it happens when we humble ourselves you know James gives you um, a simple example he gives you a simple example he says when you when you go to somebody's house right when you go to somebody's house what should you do you should try to sit where on the floor so the boss will come the whole house owner will come and say why are you sitting down please come and sit up suppose you go and sit in a chair and somebody greater than you comes excuse me no I think children will get irritated with us so much you know you know those children want to come and sit in the chairs during prayer meeting and they're sitting and somebody you know a senior person comes and we take the children so easy so casual and say hey all the children come and sit down here I tell you if they had a voice if they had a, a capability and they would have said get some more chairs man why do you want to push push us down right what about us we are sitting there and somebody big dignitary comes and the boss comes and said can you vacate that place let him come to be insulted spiritual life become more and more humble Peter says fellow elders I want to write to you let's see what he writes to these people first Peter chapter 5 be shepherds of good God's flock that is under your care serving as overseers not because you must but because you're willing you know when you serve how should you serve not because you must oh yeah I have to right how many of you remember J um, Mark Cahill's book um, you know what is that book uh, um, one thing you can do in heaven one thing I don't know if you remember that we, we did that study one thing you can do in heaven chapter 3 I think it says um, I ought to becomes I want to is it, you, know, you understand the difference I ought to I have to so there's no heart there there's no willingness there I have to yeah sometimes you know husbands and wife they joke you know so so in the groups we sometimes say oh so are you going for the party I have to otherwise you know you say look at your wife and say oh, she's going I have to man so if you say oh we want to it's a different thing oh we want to go there it's different from I have to when you serve the Lord it should not be I have to but I want to Peter says these words when you serve what do you do because you not because you must but because you are willing as God wants you to be not greedy for money but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock you know you can't force yourself as an example to, to the church yes or no hey listen to me fellow do as a no, nobody will do that you they watch you they watch you okay this man is kneeling down when praying tell me something when we are praying we are all some, some of us are standing and suddenly somebody kneels down what happens in the other uh, group within the group what happens other people also kneel down why you saw somebody doing that you you saw that is more respectable to God so what do you do you can you are capable so you also kneel down where did you get it from you got it from somebody being an example in the church there are good examples there are bad examples also but we need to be that good example Peter says you know why he says I am a fellow elder look at verse 4 when the chief shepherd appears capital C capital S when the chief shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away when the chief shepherd comes you know what Paul is Peter is saying I'm not the chief shepherd I heard a beautiful uh, phrase and that is very true I want to I, mean, I want to just share with you uh, who is the head of uh, transformation church Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ 
Who is Pastor Chandra? He is the custodian. He gave me this church. But going by stewardship, I am responsible. Suppose there is a court case tomorrow. Suppose there is some issue tomorrow. Who has to go and represent? It's me. By ownership, it is Lord Jesus Christ. Do you get it? By ownership, it is Lord Jesus Christ. But stewardship, it's me. Today it's me. Tomorrow it might be somebody else. So we always need to understand that we are under an authority. Peter understood that. He calls himself as a fellow elder because he says there is a chief shepherd. There is a chief shepherd coming. After having such an attitude, he is telling the people, look at verse 5, young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. He is not just saying, but he is actually doing and telling and then giving a caution to the young people. Young people, do it like this. You know what Paul says? You remember what Paul says? Imitate me, right? Imitate me like the way I imitate Christ. So, I am a sample of the original. Imitate me like the way I imitate Christ. The way I lose the connection with him, what happens? Like, you know, we will study in science. Moon gets the light from where? Sun, right? So, suppose the sun disappears. Sun disappears. We are reading book of Joel. We finished book of Joel, right? Book of Joel. When the sun becomes uh, uh, dark, does, does the moon shine? Read carefully what it says. When the sun loses its brightness, it also affects what? The moon, because the moon is receiving the light from the sun and reflecting it. Therefore, when the sun is dark, the moon also becomes dark. That's why you find in the Bible always they're together. The sun shall become dark, the moon shall become blood, you know. So why? Because once it is gone, it doesn't have an existence. So, when Paul is imitating Christ and Paul loses contact with God, you're a nobody. These men of God in the first century knew what they were. Peter says, I'm a fellow elder because there is a chief shepherd coming. And he says, look at verse 5, last part. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Is this not what uh, James also says? You know, they've been together. And they're writing the same things. In the Bible, when uh, similar things are written several times, it means it is for a purpose. When two different people are writing for the same thing, say they're say, writing the same theme, it is for a purpose. And here you find God opposes the proud. I heard one man describe what is opposing. You know, in opposing. You know, in, 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 in physics, in electricity, we hear about what is called as resistance. Right? Resistor. There is something called a resistor in the board, in the circuit board. Resistor. There is resistance. You know, when there is resistance, you know what it means? You want to, you are standing like this, and uh, God is standing against you and God is pushing you back. Church, we never want that life. We don't want God to be pushing us back. God opposes the proud. Pro pride is a dangerous thing, isn't it? Pride walketh before destruction. A proud man, very dangerous. Unfortunately, he doesn't know that he's proud, but it affects everybody around. And that's why as we grow in spiritual life, we become more and more humble. Peter is doing that. He's become very, he says, humble yourself. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And then he says, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You know sometimes we don't have the context and then we just take, take things out of context. It's only a humble man who will cast the cares of himself on God. Think about this. A proud man says I will handle myself. 
I will handle myself. If it's, see, it's a humble man, he will say, hey, why are you taking that burden? Let me take that. Why don't you give that burden to somebody else? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll give it. So I was a proud man. Uh, I don't need, man, I'll do it myself. It's a humble person who will say, okay, I'll yield. Tell me something. Who will yield? It's not a proud person who will ever yield. It's always a humble person who will yield. And therefore, he says, look at verse 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. You know, this is how Paul is, or Peter is writing. The topic is changing there, but I want to take you to another person who as he grew in uh, spiritual life, how he became humble. You know, Paul, Acts chapter 9, he came to kill Christians. He had the royal authority, he had the priestly authority, he had the letters from the you know, synagogue, and he was going to kill people. And he was going to kill people, Jesus confronted him. And he said, Paul, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you? He said, I'm the one who you're persecuting. And then because of that, this man, see God, I told you right, God has a great sense of humor. In the same chapter, Acts chapter 9, look at verse chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, this man who came with all the authority, with the sword, with all the weapons, you know what's happening? Some people came to know that Saul is here and they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. So what, did, uh, what, did, uh, what happened to Saul? Look at chapter 9 and verse 23. After many days had gone by, the Jews conspired to kill him, that is Saul. But Saul learned of their plan day and night. They kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. So they were waiting. As soon as he comes out, just chop his head off. Kill, him, kill this fellow. Look at verse 25. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through the opening in the wall. This man was such a giant with all the authority. You know, where is he now? You know, this is a, this is a wall. This is a city wall, right? Just think this is a city wall. And from the top, uh, you know what they did? On the other side, they, uh, they say, Saul, Saul, you want to live, you have to do this. I don't know. No, I came to kill these fellows and I'm such a big... Hey, hold on, no, no. You know what? Things are different now. If you do that, you'll die. He said, what do you do? Sit in this basket. Excuse me, sit in the basket? Yeah, that's the only way, man. Saul, the man who came to kill the Christians on the way to Damascus, got into a basket. Is sitting and hiding in a basket. And his friends put that basket on the other side of the wall, slowly releasing the rope. And in that wall, there was a hole. Probably Indian contractor, I don't know. He released that, they released that rope slowly. And when he came to the hole, he jumped out of that hole, out of the city gate. Who's this man? who came to the same city, wow, he came to the same city with the authority to kill people in the city. My dear brothers and sisters, that's how Saul understood the sample of what is humility. He understood what is humility. I want to tell you his journey. I want you to understand what he said. First Corinthians chapter 15. Chapter 15 and verse 9. Verse 9. For I am least of the apostles. You know what, is, what Paul says? I am least of the apostles. But still I am an apostle. You understand it? I am least of the apostles, but still, I am an apostle. Uh, apostle? How, can, how, how are you an apostle, Paul? 
apostle is somebody who should have been with Jesus Christ don't be deceived by all these fellows in the world today who are putting all their names you know I'm an apostle there's a fellow in India called prophetical evangelist you know he's called a prophetical evangelist I called him and said I heard a prophet or an evangelist I never heard what is prophetical evangelist what is that people just put whatever names they want you know what the call is more important there are people who have fake degrees in the Christendom yeah I've heard of places where they sell doctorates doctorates in theology yeah I know how much I'm struggling I'll tell you I got stuck at one point Acts chapter 11 is my thesis point I got stuck I got stuck and I wrote my notes where is it written in the Bible that the Jews should not associate with the Gentiles they don't listen carefully they don't but where is it written in the Bible that they should not when Peter went to Cornelius house and he was eating and the Acts chapter 11 his friends came and said why did you go to that house and eat is there any anywhere in the mosaic law that a Jew should not associate with Gentile if that is the case Ruth should not be in the community Rahab should not be in the community how do the Jews associate with Gentiles is it written in the mosaic law that's where I'm stuck right now in my in my uh, uh, doctorate I see at other places where people just sell how many 15,000 rupees reverend doctor oh, go put it on the television stupidity how are you an apostle Paul Paul gives an explanation chapter 15 first uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 8 he's giving a list of where Jesus appeared and he says and last of all he appeared to me also as one abnormally born he's actually referring to Acts chapter 9 he said I am abnormally born I met Jesus Christ apostle should have been who was with Jesus Christ and here you find Paul says I am the least of what apostles as the time passed by as the time passed by as he grew more in life you know what he says Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8 Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8 here he says although I am less than the least of God's people you know what I, do you understand the difference now I am less than the least of who which category I mean we, we need to remember the category then you will understand which category is he comparing himself to God's people what was he comparing himself to before apostles so is he stepping up or is he stepping down he's stepping down why spiritually mature man that's a sign of your humility first he started saying you know I am the least of the apostles look at the language so you need to look at the language too I am the least of the apostles Ephesians 3 8 I am less than the least of God's people he doesn't say I am the least of the God's people he says I am less than the least of God's people and Ephesians is wonderful one, I mean, you can you, if, you, if you really want to study Ephesians you can go on for one full year and there's so much so much of juice in this powerful word in Ephesians great theology in Ephesians and Galatians great great word of God you know first three chapters I want to tell you something first three chapters it's very difficult to understand even uh, first three chapters of Ephesians not a single command is given there it is all talking about the privileges of a godly person a person who is saved or the blessings of a saved person that is all in first chapter first three chapters and there Paul says you know what I am less than the least of apostles to the end of his life as he's about to die can you imagine that is much more mature man you know what he says about himself first Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15 1st Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15 this is what he says about himself 
Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Now which category is Paul comparing himself to? Sinners. And among the sinners, what is he? The worst. He started with apostles. I'm the least of the apostles. Grew much closer to Lord Jesus Christ. As he grew much closer to Lord Jesus Christ, he said what? I am less than the least of God's people. Having experienced the imprisonment in Rome, having been released, and then having been, been flogged, being naked for Jesus Christ, being hungry for Jesus Christ, being lashed 39 times, uh, several times, and then being uh, uh, you know, insulted by people inside, outside, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 gives you a list of what he went through. And don't forget, Acts chapter 13, which he refers to in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he is the only man who went to the third heaven. Paul says in chapter 12 in 2 Corinthians, I know of a man who went to the third heaven. You know who is that man? Paul. He should give his credentials and say, hey, you know what, even Peter is nothing in front of me. That fellow was with Jesus Christ. He never went to third heaven. I went to third heaven. That's what he should say, right? He says, as he grew in life, he says, I'm the worst among the sinners. Tell me, does this, is, this, is this how the world will let you write your resume as you grow in years? Oh, I mean, the, world, the resume that you write in the world is what? Becoming bigger, 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 thicker and thicker, heavier, heavier. But in God's ways it's different. Least of the apostles, least, less than the least of God's people, worst among sinners. Paul says, there's a crown waiting for me. There's a crown waiting for me. Of all the best examples that you find in the Bible of humility, there's one person we can never forget. Lord Jesus Christ himself. I want to share this with you and then we'll take part in the table. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Look at verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Okay, just stop there. Okay. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things. Is it some things or a few things? All things. What is all things? Sickness. Demons. Right? Negativity. You name anything. God put all, Father put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He came from God and he was returning to God. I think you know, it's a wonderful time to talk about immigration. Suppose you are told, don't worry about your immigration status. Whatever your status is, you can come in and we'll give you free entry. Right now, some of you will book your ticket to India. Some people wanted to go to Israel. Yeah, We had a discussion and said, can we go to Israel? We'll go to Israel. But whether we'll come back or not is a big question. Why? Because we are not ready yet. We want to go, but we may not come back into the country. That's why, excuse me, can we go to Alaska? You know, somewhere where we don't need an immigration problem, when we don't have an immigration problem. Here, Jesus says, you know, John writes here, I know that I came from God and I'm going to God. So if that is a condition, tell me, you should have arrogance, isn't it? You should have loftiness. Nothing can shake me now. Yeah? You get a letter from immigration. Uh, we know that your, uh, your H1 extension is uh, uh, due, but um, this, H1, this letter is to be considered as your H1 extension for next 10 years. Wow, wonderful. Yeah? So happy. So when you have that confidence, how is your attitude? Be so happy, so lofty and say, no, don't care for anything. Look at verse 4, what Jesus did. 
having that authority, having known everything, verse 4, so he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. I want you to remember in what context did Jesus take that towel to wash the feet of the disciples? Not when he was a weak person. Not when he became, you know, such an uh, impotent or somebody who didn't have any capability. No. It was when he had everything under him. You know, somebody said, if you want to really know somebody's attitude, give them power and see what they will do. Some people, when they get the power, I mean, you know, they'll be, you, you, they don't walk with you. You just give them some responsibility, they'll be like, you know, nobody is equal to me kind of attitude. You know what did Jesus do? He had everything under him. He took a towel, went to wash the feet of his disciples. John the Baptist says, I am not worthy to open the shoe latchet. There were slaves in Jewish uh, culture. One, one slave had to come and open the shoe. And another slave had to wash the feet of the guests. You know what Jesus did? He went one step lower than John the Baptist. John the Baptist just said, right? I am not worthy to even open the shoe latchet. He just said. What did Jesus do? He did it. What did he do? Uh, what a slave, a lower level slave than what John the Baptist mentioned does. He washed the feet of Jesus. <laughs> I tell you, I think 90% of the problems in the churches will be solved if People are humble. I think I very strongly believe that. 90% of the problems will be solved if people are humble. Instead of saying, how dare he? Who does he think he himself? Oh, you wanted to correct me? I'm thankful to you. You know, there's a, there's a verse, very powerful verse, which says, when a godly man rebukes, it is like oil. How many of you like, you know, having a good massage? A good massage. Yeah? You like it? A good massage? There's oil and good massage. When a godly man rebukes, look at Psalm 141. Look at Psalm 141 and verse 5. Some people say, excuse me, the generation has changed. If the generation has changed, you know, change your Bible also. <laughs> Isn't it? Somebody said, there's no need to, somebody, you know, uh, you know what's happening today? I read uh, this morning, you know, California, they want to ban the Bibles. Ban the selling of Bibles. California. They're planning to ban the sale of Bibles. It seems I heard, I don't know how far it is true, I heard uh, another report, sometimes, you know, every, every report on the internet is not true, so please be careful. I heard somebody make a comment and said, Pope said we need to change the Bible. Excuse me, you don't have to. This is the word of God. You may say, this word is not valid for this generation. A lot of people say that. Oh, this is America, man. Excuse me. Whether it's America, Uganda or uh, India, the word of God is the word of God. Tell me something. I want your reaction, okay? I, I mean, I don't care uh, whether it's online or not. I just want to, I want to get your reaction. Tell me something. Read that verse, Psalm 141, verse 5. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it. How many of you are ready to do this? Tell me. Yeah. Let a righteous man strike me. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Uh, uh, I know uh, Alice has King James. Can you read that King James, Alice? Psalm 141 verse 5. Yeah. Right. It is oil. It's an anointing. It is oil on my head. A righteous man telling me. You know, 
when our humility will be tested when the things that you like the most are tickled you get it a lot of people do things with resentment resentment uh, that fellow said I have to do this so let me do this there is no joy in what you are serving Peter said when you serve the Lord you must do it willingly not because you have to you have to do it willingly you are told something that you don't like to do what happens you immediately say I don't do that I don't do that you know what maybe you are giving you are being given a new direction you are being given a new direction that's where you that's where your humility is seen I don't know how much Pradeep love you know used to like playing the jimbe you remember last year when he came the first time he showed up in a meeting he came with jimbe he like you know uh, you know more, 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 no, I don't know if uh, uh, he loved his jimbe more than Bindu wherever he goes he will bring his jimbe he used to play the jimbe people said wow wonderful he play, plays very well I said see uh, Pradeep jimbe for English worship is not really good you can't play for everything so I sat with him for four months and I taught him the bass guitar ask him how many times you know he must have said <laughs> I would have rather been happy with this jimbe you know working with this Anna yeah he just scolds like anything you know you ask my son you know be tears during practice yeah tears during practice did you hear today's worship I tell you something I have bass guitar set on my keyboard when he comes you know I don't even play that because he plays so beautifully if he had said no no I'm good at this only thank you those of you who have come after uh, after Pradeep did you ever know that he's actually was a jimbe player you know him as what a bass player if a human can help give a direction to somebody in life how much more God when he tells you to do something new and we say we resist and say hmm, I can't do this I never did this that's where your humility is tested 